Hey everybody, Ben here from the Bonehead Podcast and welcome to Necromantic Team Development. So we've had a look at the starting rosters for leagues, we've had a look at tournament rosters and uh, now we're going to go through each of the teams um, in more depth, looking at each positional and really looking at which skills they would benefit from. So if you're running this team in a league, you kind of get an idea of what skills work well quickly, what players can take randoms quite effectively. The whole idea is it gives you a pretty good idea of uh, things you can do with your team in league. And today we are covering necromantic teams. <laughs> So the Necro team had a tiny bit of a redesign. They lost their Whites, uh, which were the same as the Undead team, and they've been replaced with Wraiths instead, who are ghosts with no hands. So they have lost some of the ball handling ability. Um, now just the only 3 plus players are the two Werewolves and the Ghouls on the team. Everybody else is Agility 4 plus or has no hands at all. And the Zombies can't throw anymore, but I don't think that's as much of an impact on the way the team runs so it's a really interesting team they've got high priced um positionals it's it's a very um what's the word it, it can it can work the players in the team can do several things so ghouls and the werewolves are both really good on offense and defense and you've got some golems who are beef and now you've got the wraiths who really are um, probably going to be some of the best uh, sort of supportive players out there um, due to the way their skills run. Anyway, we're going to start with Flesh Golems. So Flesh Golems are your blockers basically on this team. You, you, you get 0 to 2 of them and they basically go on the line and smash things up. Uh, Flesh Golems, 115k, movement 4, strength 4, agility 4+, plus, no passing ability, armor 10+, plus, regeneration, stand firm and thick skull. So these guys stay on the line. They dish out pain, but they are built to receive it. Armor 10 plus, plus strength 4, and regeneration and thick skull means that if they actually get hit, they're going to get back, they're just going to get right back up again. If they get knocked out uh, of the game, basically, uh, well, thick skull is going to stop that from happening, but if they get casualty, regeneration is again going to help bring them back. And stand firm means that if you put them on the line, they're not moving. If you put them on the side of the cage, they're not moving. So, based on that, they are going to skill up sort of slow to medium. They're only really going to get points from casualties and um, MVPs. So, let's have a look at some skills. Now, the great thing is that these guys have general and strength um, as a beginning. And because of that, they can take block nice and quick. So, they've got a really good little menu of skills that helps make them better. So, they are blockers. So... Having block is going to absolutely make them better on offense and defense. So block is is should be really up there on the skills, as is guard. So it will depend on your league and it will depend on your team and how it's built. But I kind of see the flesh golems, block and guard, kind of whichever way round you want to do it. Mighty blow and grab are kind of your, your second tier skills after that. But block makes them tougher to knock down and makes them more... Um, damagey and guard is just going to help facilitate the rest of the team it depends on what other positionals you're running because the way necro works is you kind of start out with six of your eight positionals so if you've got uh if you've got the wraiths now they kind of go the guard angle because guard sidestep block means they do some good stuff the flesh golems here can then take block and then you get four blockers and uh, two of those with guard for the first skill two of them are block for the first skill that's a lot of dice um Flesh Golems getting guard, however, will help the rest of the players. So, honestly, flip a coin. But you're only really going to get one shot at it. The other thing you can consider doing is taking a random uh, general or strength. Now, I, I wouldn't recommend it for the Flesh Golem. It can be really tempting because actually you can risk it you could get guard you could get mighty blow you could get grab you could get break tackle you know those are all really good skills for strength and on a general you could get block you could get frenzy those are reasonable skills for the flesh golem i think it's probably better to save up and just if you're in doubt take block um ultimately it's going to help you farm out spp to get to that second level quicker and then guard but if you want to go guard first, it depends on your style of play. Later on, actually, break tackle is going to benefit them because it means you're going to be able to bounce them out on a 2+. Plus. And if they've already got block and they've already got guard, actually, being able to redistribute them is going to be pretty decent. Honestly, though, I think the Flesh Golems are just going to stay on the line and just punch and be punched. So block, guard, mighty blow, 
those three skills in any order that you fancy are going to do great things. If you do want to save up and look at the secondary skills, dodge is going to keep them standing up much much better and if you do need to move them around without having break tackle then a four plus with a re-roll into the open is okay uh, defensive is the other skill that could be handy for these guys later on once they've got guard because defensive will stop your opponent's guard from working um, during your oh no sorry during your opponent's team turn but not during your own team turn any opposition players being marked by this player cannot use the guard skill so it's a really good counter guard so there's a lot of different ways you can go with the flesh golem and none of them are bad Honestly, guys, if you had a block golem, a guard golem, or a mighty blow golem, it's going to do good stuff. And talking of good stuff, we've got the werewolves. Now, the werewolves are unabashedly the stars of this team, but you pay for it. 125k, movement 8, strength 3, agility 3+, plus, passing 4+, plus, armor 9+, plus, claws, frenzy, and regeneration. So these guys are two skills away from just being absolutely phenomenal players. And the way you get there is really up to you. There's kind of two builds, but there's a nice little middle ground. So the middle ground is Blodge. You can go dodge first, or you can go block first. It depends on how your team, again, is built. If you've got ghouls, take block. If you don't have ghouls, take dodge. If you've got two wraiths, you've got two block. If you've got two ghouls, you've got two dodge. So actually, you can kind of counterbalance that point. If you take block on the werewolves, they become your blitzers. If you take dodge on the werewolves, they become your ball carriers. They become your runners, basically. Um, I like the idea of just lodging them. It's really straightforward and they've got Frenzy already, so they're going to do great work. Frenzy and Claws. If you're going to go the Blitzer angle, then Blodge is a great way to go block. And then you've got Mighty Blow and Guard. Because you've got two Werewolves and because they've got Frenzy, actually, you want some Guard support. Whether that's going to be uh, with your Wraiths or a Werewolf kind of tag team of Block Guard there's a lot you can do with these guys be careful with frenzy but it's just going to allow you to roll more dice and more blocks mean more casualty points so you should be able to skill up nicely basically block dodge mighty blow guard is a fantastic blitzer combo alternatively with werewolf because it is movement eight if you want to make it a scoring threat you've got catch nerves of steel on a double you've got sidestep or stand firm on a double to to support it with its frenzy uh, sprint sure feet will allow it to be faster strip ball is going to make it a very effective ball sacker again with frenzy you get two goes at that on the ball will be useful and uh, gives you three extra squares at the beginning if you want to have a runner so if you've got no ghouls and you're going to be running your werewolf as your ball carrier then actually on the ball could be kind of useful but it's just not going to be as useful as making it a blodger, to be honest with you. And break tackle is always going to be good as well. Those are just some skills that you can kind of flesh out. But these are level three, no, they're level four, level five skills, like beyond that point. Werewolves, you cannot go wrong with block or dodge as your first. The other thing you can do is save up for a, um, a stat. You're going to kind of feel a bit short changed because you're going to wish you had block and because I think block and dodge comes to uh, 14 SPP uh, total spend, whereas your first stat up is 18. So by the time you roll one stat up, you could already have a blodging werewolf. Ah, that is a tough thing to give up. Now they're going to score and they're going to cause casualties, so they're going to get the SPPs to do it. If you're building for the long run, then actually it's not a terrible idea to wait and do that stat up because a movement nine werewolf is amazing an agility two plus werewolf is amazing and a strength four werewolf is basically a couple of skills short of actually being wilhelm cheney so werewolves it all depends on how your team is how your league is and whether you are brewing for the long game i think when we see bb3 land there's going to be uh, probably a combo of one werewolf goes straight for block and dodge and becomes your blitzer extraordinaire basically and then the other werewolf just farms spp to get that first stat up and quite frankly maybe a second stat up although edge and strength are going to be difficult to get movements automatic essentially so movement nine werewolf is going to be really really sweet and it's going to really be a scoring threat but it is tough to determine whether that is better or worse than a blodger okay now we've got the new boys to the team so the wraiths are ninety five thousand. So 5k more than the uh, more than the, the whites they're replacing. Movement 6, Strength 3, Agility 3+, plus, so all kind of standard, no passing, Armor 9+, plus, that's okay. Block, Foul Appearance, No Hands, Regeneration, and Sidestep. So there's kind of several angles. 
Block and sidestep means that they will dance around whoever they are by. They're going to stay up and they're going to be able to just hang on to a target. Regenerations means that when they actually do get punched, they're going to get back. So that means that you're going to have these players for longer, um, which means you can afford to grind them up and to, to, to take your time with the SPP to choose the skills. Foul Appearance, again, is going to keep them around. And No Hands is obviously because they're a ghost. So Foul Appearance and No Hands is the fact that they are ethereal. Sidestep, they're going to swoosh around. Regeneration, they're going to keep coming back and you're going to get blocked. So these guys have got General and Strength. There's a couple of different ways to go with these players. I believe, again, it depends on your, your, your set of three positionals, essentially. So these are going to be your Blitzers if you don't have Werewolves or until the Werewolves get blocked. Um, so they are going to be uh, movement six. They've got a reasonable reach. So if you've got these guys, then your golems want to go guard, so that these guys can strike. I like guard on these guys as well. It's really between guard and mighty blow. Um, they are either going to be trying to remove or just helping to control by making your other players better. Two teams of uh, wraiths and either wolves or golems are just going to be dancing around that, that and causing those guard it's just going to be two die block after two die block after two die block and that is going to be really effective they don't make bad safety so giving them a tackle or strip ball because of that sidestep is going to mean that they are going to keep on that player frenzy grab uh, a couple of things you can think about later on i, I You've got two Frenzy with the Werewolves, but if your Wraith is already Guard Mighty Blow, then Frenzy's just going to keep them on it, and Sidestep is going to allow them to kind of counterbalance the Frenzy shenanigans. If you want to save up and take a double, then Defensive, if you've already got Guard, is going to be really effective. Dodge is going to help you stay up as well. Dodge, Blodge Step is fantastic, especially when you're armor 9 plus with a generation and foul appearance. Even if they can punch you and they do hit you, you're getting back up again, which is pretty sweet. Diving Tackle is going to make them, again, really effective at staying on the target and just pinning somebody down. And jump up is going to keep them fighting because sidestep is going to mean that if they do get crumped, they get crumped in a space that you choose, which means having jump up, they can block from, from prone, which is huge, uh, or they can just maneuver without paying any cost at all. Not too fussed about stat ups with the Wraith. I don't think it's worth saving up that far. And if you are at all unsure about what to do with the Wraith, just take guard because both wraiths with guard are going to be able to enable your golems, protect your golems. They're going to be able to enable your line dudes. And they're also going to be really good supports for your werewolves. So guard on these guys straight away is just going to enable the rest of your team. So if in doubt, guard it out. And then you've got the dodge players. So your ghouls in undead are your ball carriers and your catchers. They're your runners. The ghouls in the necro team their second string to the werewolves but if you run ghouls it allows your werewolves to be blitzers if you don't run wolves uh, then it your ghouls are your ball carriers so let's assume you're going with ghouls so you want to know what to do with them they start with dodge which makes it really difficult to, to recommend taking anything other than block so you've got an offensive guy and you've got a defensive guy when it comes to ghoul building um, wrestle dodge is a fantastic combo here for a ghoul so if you want a ball sacker now bear in mind if you've got wraiths or golems you've got some some guard on the way there's a reasonable chance that actually your ghoul is going to be able to attempt a four plus dodge into a tackle zone to get that one die block with wrestle using wrestle and dropping the ball out is going to be really really useful alternatively if you want your ghoul to be the ball carrier of your team Adding block to dodge means he is a movement 7, agility 3+, plus, strength 3, blodger, which again is not bad at all. He's going to be really difficult to take down, and you should have some, some reasonable players to shield, to gum up the ground, and to, to protect him in one way or another. So ghouls, starting with block or wrestle, probably one of each, one as a defensive player, one as an offensive ball carrier, sets you off really well. You can always look at taking sure hands. Um... If on that ball carrier block, sure hands, yeah, it gives you the reroll to pick up the ball, which will be very handy tagging into to, to dodge if you want to bounce into tackle zones to pick up a ball that's been scattered on the defense. Say your wrestle guy jumps in somewhere, drops the ball, then you've got your block sure hands guy who can stray in there and just have a crack at picking up the ball. Sidestep is just going to help you feel faster as it is. Doubles wise, break tackle isn't the worst skill in the world. It means that once per turn, the ghoul is on a 2 plus with a reroll. That's pretty maneuverable. 
guard as well is also going to be really helpful you've got leader here it, depending on your situation with rerolls rerolls are expensive for the necro team so having the opportunity to jump another one in there saving yourself 140k in league is again something that's really worth considering with your ghoul put block on one then actually saving up for leader may save you some cash it depends on your situation with your team on the ball if you've got a ball carrier a ghoul ball carrier is going to mean that you kind of get free rolled half a turn's worth of movement on the bounce so when you're receiving the ball that ghoul is going to start with an opportunity to get underneath it and catch it but it's just going to save you three squares of your first turn and it's quite a slow team this but actually having a ghoul start you on the receiving turn with essentially 10 movement and then your werewolves with eight movement you've got an absolute beast of a move of a window there to grab the ball and to do stuff um you can stave up for stats a movement eight ghoul is not bad an agility two plus ghoul isn't bad and a strength four ghoul isn't bad so if you're willing to wait that long you've got good odds at making a pretty decent player Ghouls are really malleable. You, you can do, you can kind of take them in a whole bunch of directions. You could even go frenzy strip ball with a ghoul because you've got that integral dodge. It makes them a really good opportunity to jump in there. Block is a really safe first bet. Um, one block, one wrestle, and then just see how it plays out. And then we've got the unsung heroes of the Necromantic team. So their passing stat has been obliterated. They cannot pass anymore, which is a shame because I've had some fun in the zombie league. Um, so the zombie linemen, they're 40k. They're not very good. And that's okay. They're movement 4, strength 3, agility 4+, plus, 9+, plus armor, and regeneration. They are the guys that just stand next to things and get punched so we've talked about tvop um, a couple of times which is team value on pitch so if you've got a zombie tagging any player that's 40k or more your ev if it's 50k or more you are profiting the on the pitch so a zombie lineman tagging up a minotaur is punching 100k above its weight which means you are in a really good spot so zombies are great for that so there's kind of three angles with zombies. One is to just give them block or wrestle early on and just have them take punches and punch back. That's it. That's their job. You can save up to six SPP and get kick. One kick is going to be really useful on the team. And dirty player is also going to be really useful because you will have the numbers so that you can do a couple of cheeky zombie fouls. If you want to wait and save up, guard is going to be fantastic. Again, strength three, armor nine plus regeneration means that even if they stand next to something and get punched, they've got a good chance at still being there. Sneaky get is going to combo with dirty player, but that's a long way to wait for SPP to put both of those together. And mighty blow, if you've got guard, is also really cool. The reason we talk about this is because random general skills, zombie linemen are fantastic candidates for this. So they get three SPP, a zombie ends up with a touchdown, it gets the MVP, whatever. Block is cool. Dauntless will be useful. Dirty player is good. Fend is actually quite useful on this team where you've got stand firm on the golems, on the golems. So you've got Fend, so you can actually control the board. You kind of want to stay in base contact with the way zombies are, but there are some times where if you've got a dangerous player freeing it up, even though there's no net for it to move through, is going to be beneficial. So Fend is okay. Frenzy is quite entertaining. You're going to have to lean on your guard if you roll Frenzy. Kick is what you want. Pro will be interesting. Uh, shadowing will be garbage. Strip ball, not so much. Sure hands will be okay. Uh, tackle will be reasonably useful. And wrestle is the one. So if you get three SPP and you don't think you're going to wait for the zombie to do it, take a gamble. Block is going to be useful. Wrestle is going to be useful. Kick is going to be useful. Dirty player is going to be useful. It's going to be okay. Alternatively, save up to 6 SPP, take that block slash wrestle slash kick slash dirty player, or take a random strength. So these guys get A and S for secondary, so agility and strength skills. I think if you have got 6 SPP, it might not be the worst thing in the world to take a punt with a zombie. Armbar is not going to be great. But the zombie is going to be in contact with stuff, and those guys are going to want to try and dodge away. If they fail, it's basically mighty blow against the armor. That's fantastic. It's kind of a win more skill, but still. Brawler is going to be uh, kind of like a semi block. You've got guard on the team, so it's going to work okay. Break tackle is going to mean that that zombie just dodges around on a 2 plus. That's going to come in handy as well. Grab again with guard could be useful. Guard itself is a fantastic role. Juggernaut, not going to be a lot of use because you shouldn't really be blitzing with a zombie, but still, you never know. Mighty Blow plus one will be useful. Multiple block isn't going to be useful unless you've got a ton of guard. Pile Driver, however, could be quite fun. 
You make a block, you don't break the armor, you foul, if it gets sent off, it's just a zombie. And it's a 60k zombie. Uh, stand firm is going to be really useful to help with the cage, and it's just going to help uh, just support your golems and what they're doing. Strong arm will be a reroll, and thick skull, it's just going to help that zombie kick around. So, none of this is great. The right thing to do is to save and wait for 6 SPP, take block or wrestle or kick or dirty player to just facilitate your team. Then the next best thing to do is to just keep the SPP, wait till 18, roll for a stat, then take a double that complements it. If you've got block, he gets guard. If you've got kick, I actually don't know what I'd give him on double if he had kick. But you know, um, you might roll a strength up, you might roll an agility up. Don't know if I'd take the edge up. Strength up, probably not a great idea either because that zombie's going to be massive in cost and movement would be bad as well. But the whole point is you just keep the zombie at one skill until you're ready to take a second, which is going to be guard or mighty blow. Guard will be really, really good um, on any of these guys. So the other angle is you skip block entirely and you just save up for guard. You're going to save a little bit of team value, but you're going to... You're going to lose a, a quite a bit of equity. I'd rather have that 20k for a block zombie because that zombie is just going to get put up against stuff. Anyway, that wraps up the video on necromantic team development. It's a new team essentially because of the way the wraith is going to interact with it. So I'm really excited to see how it's going to play out on the tabletop. It's a tough team for League, I think. I think great at tournaments because you can automatically give those skills. But in League... The Wolves and the Ghouls are going to get some touchdowns. The Golems are going to get a couple of incidental casualties, same as the Wraiths. It's going to be slow brew. Uh, it's going to be slightly more fun than Necro, uh, the Nurgle, but it is going to be like it is a long-term team. I think these guys in Blood Bowl 3 are going to be fantastic because online you can farm games. On tabletop, Necro are going to be great. They're not bad at vanilla. They're tier 2, but they're not bad. Um, but to develop, they are going to take a while. You can end up with some cool werewolves. And the golems and the wraiths are going to end up as guard caddies, and that's going to be fine too. But the whole team is going to end up a bit spiky, where there's going to be a few players that have that do cool stuff, um, and the rest of it is just going to be a bit bland. It is still going to win pretty hard, though. So uh, I think, and the models are great. So there's going to be a ton of these teams out and about, and you never know, there might be a winning formula hidden away somewhere. Anyway, thanks ever so much for watching. Do let me know what you think of Necro Teams in the comments because I'm genuinely interested. And uh, we'll be back again soon with some more Blood Bowl. Thanks very much. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to support the show even further, please like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Or come and join us in our Patreon, uh, link below, where you get early access to our content and monthly competitions. See you later.